Hi there and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me Julian and today we want to talk about a timer event and how to fire that with Google Tag Manager. As always these little videos are brought to you by gtmtraining.com and I'm about to start a webinar series on the various topics of Google Tag Manager. So if you want to follow along and ask questions on these videos then sign up to one of the webinars at gtmtraining.com slash webinar. So today we want to talk about the GTM timer listener and we already talked about this in another video in context with the adjusted bounce rate. So if you want to check that out, head over to the video of the adjusted bounce rate. I will link it up below. Now today we want to take a closer look at the GTM timer listener and fire an event into Google Analytics. The first thing I want to dissect here is the actual trigger. Let's go over to triggers in our Google Tag Manager interface and click on new. And here we can name our trigger. And as the event, of course, we'll choose the timer event. And what the trigger actually does is fire an event into the data layer after a given time. And based off this event, we can fire our tags or check the variables that we have available. Now the event name can be inputted here. The default is GTM timer, which is fine with me. Then we have the interval, which is the number of milliseconds when this event should be fired into the data layer. So if you want to have five seconds, you would put in 5000. And you can set a limit after the first firing or the second firing. And this will actually run in a loop after five seconds it will fire another gtm timer event and you can limit this by putting in a number here how many times you want this gtm timer event to fire into the data layer let's put in three here just for demonstration sake click on continue and then we can choose when we want this trigger and this timer to run and on which page currently this only works on which page so we'll just go with the page url matches the regex dot star which will deploy our timer trigger on all pages but if you want to limit it to just one page for example your landing page you could do this at this point let's click on continue and then we have the conditions when our trigger should turn true and fire our tags so we can input our variable here and match that up to a condition. For now, just for demonstration, I will go with all timers so we can see the timer event firing into the data layer and not fire a tag yet. Let's save this trigger and go into our preview and debug mode. Go back to our demo page. And here we see that after five seconds, a GTM timer has fired. Another five seconds, another GTM timer has fired. And after another five seconds, another GTM timer event has fired. Now there's nothing really happening on the event, tags fired on this event, but this is something we would do in our tag configuration. Now, why would you even use this GTM timer? Well, if you know events within the data layer are functioning like checkpoints, so each of these checkpoints we could use to check our variables, turn our trigger to true, and then fire a tag. For example, on the page view, we are firing our Google Analytics tag, and we have configured our trigger to check on the event gtmjs which is the page view event if this event happened and once it happened we can turn this to true and fire our tag and that's how it is configured now we could also check our events upon the first gtm timer or the second or the third and then fire a tag to our marketing tools such as google analytics and one of the use cases would be this adjusted bounce rate that we have seen previously. Now let's try this out. Let's redefine our trigger here. Let's go back to our GTM timer trigger. Let's call this 
five seconds. It's so our five seconds trigger. And we only want to fire this one time. Let's continue this. And this should turn true on any GTM timer event. So on any page that the GTM timer event appears, we will fire our tag. Let's save this trigger. Go to tags and fire a Google Analytics event. Let's go with new. And this will be named Google Analytics event. And it will fire after five seconds. Let's go to Google Analytics as a product, Universal Analytics, because that's what we have installed. And as a tracking ID, we put in our variable because we have stored our tracking ID in this constant variable. And as a track type, we'll choose event. The category will be timer. The action will be ten, uh, five seconds. And the label, let's fill this in dynamically with the page path. And the last section here, we have the non-interaction hit configuration, which we can turn to true if we don't want this event to affect our bounce rate. Let's turn this to true because we are not doing the adjusted bounce rate right now and we don't want this to affect our bounce rate. Let's click on continue and then as a trigger, we'll choose our five seconds timer trigger. Let's save that, create it. And refresh. Let's go over to our page again, reload our page. And after five seconds, we see our GTM timer event. And this time it turned true and fired our Google Analytics event in five seconds. You can also look into our Google Analytics and see if our event has been received correctly. Here we have it. Since it was a non-interactive event, we have here events after the last 30 minutes and event category was timer, the event action was five seconds. And within those, we have the event label, which represents the page path that we fired this event on. And this would basically happen on any page. And so we can measure on which page views did people stay longer than five seconds. Now five seconds is a little bit short, to be honest, but you can adjust the timing within the trigger. And most of the times you use this trigger in combination with a Google Analytics event tag in order to adjust the bounce rate within Google Analytics. But you could also choose to fire any tag into a marketing tool such as an AdWords retargeting tag after people have stayed on your page for more than 5, 10, 30 seconds or longer. But to be honest, I don't use the GTM timer too often since for me the big question is always what does the user actually do on your page? Does he take any interaction? And I use the click and the form submit trigger much more often than the GTM timer trigger. Now in the end, obviously, you can go to Google Tag Manager and publish this as a version so it'll be available to all your users out there and track if they have stayed on a page longer than five seconds. And that's already it with this week's video of gtmtraining.com. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel or if you have questions, leave a comment below. And remember to check out our webinar series at gtmtraining.com slash webinar. I'm Julian, till next time. So now let's get started with scroll tracking within GTM. And in order to, and what we'll do in this little tutorial is implement a custom HTML tag, which will basically act as our event listener in Google Tag Manager. And when somebody's now let's get started talking about bounce rate. So the bounce rate is often seen as this metric to evaluate landing pages. So does the traffic that hits my page actually stick around 
or leave the page. There's actually a little bit of a problem here with the bounce rate because the way that is defined in Google Analytics. Let's have a look. So a bounce in.